question number one is while walking a patient's leg remains extended in mid walk while foot is in the air which nerve is involved option a sciatic nerve option b tibial nerve option c femoral nerve option d common peroneal nerve option e superior gluteal nerve The correct answer in this scenario is superior gluteal nerves because it supplies the gluteus medius minimus and tensor fascia lata and because of this nerve injury patient is unable to lift his ear and the normal side is getting sagging so we can see a lesion causes Trendelberg's position superior gluteal nerve has nerve fibers from L4, 5 and S1 and ex it exits through greater sciatic front Question number two is after a gunshot injury to spinal cord, a man finds extension at knee difficult. On examination, extensor muscles of knee are paralyzed. Which spinal cord segments are most likely to be involved? Option A, L2, 3. Option B, L3 and 4. Option C, L4, 5. Option D, L5, S1. Option E, S1 and S2. So, the correct answer in this scenario is option A because the corticeps femoris do the extension of the knee joint and it is supplied by femoral nerve. Femoral nerve has a nerve component of L2 and 3. Question number 3 is about lift drainage of a leg. Option A deep inguinal lymph node, option B superficial inguinal node, horizontal group, option C internal iliac nodes, option D vertical group of superficial inguinal nodes, option E external external iliac nodes. So the correct answer in this scenario is option D vertical group of superficial inguinal lymph nodes because rest of the options are false deep inguinal lymph node is uh, getting the further transmission of the lymph nodes and internal iliac nodes and external iliac nodes they receive the lymph nodes from uh, lymph supply from the pelvis and perineum not from the leg question number four a woman in lithotomy position after a birth of her child is unable to dorsiflex the leg which nerve is damaged question option a is common perineal nerve Option B is sciatic nerve, option C is tibial nerve, option D is deep perineal nerve, option E is femoral nerve. So considering the question or the scenario about the lithotomy position and the patient is unable to dorsiflex his leg. So dorsiflexion is done with uh, basically by common perineal nerve so the correct answer in this scenario is option a common perineal nerve and it is the most common nerve damage in the lithotomy position question number five a 35 year old male laborer present with acute sudden pain starting from lower lumbar area and radiating along posterior aspect of left lower limb. The symptom started after lifting a heavy container three days back. On examination, straight leg raising is restricted to 30 degrees on left side and decreased sensation along lateral border of left foot. Weakness of left flexor hallucis longus and diminished ankle reflex. This patient has compression of Option A, first sacral nerve root. Option B, second sacral nerve root. Option C, fourth lumbrical nerve root. Option D, fifth lumbrical nerve root. Option E, sciatic nerve. So the correct answer in this scenario is option A, first sacral nerve root because the sensory supply is on the lateral side of the dorsum of the foot and it also causes weakness in dorsiflexion and also this nerve is most commonly involved in the compression of the L5 and S1 disc prolapse. Question number six, 
A 25 year old sprinter developed acute leg pain while running. The next day, he noticed ichymosis around ankle. He can stand on his toes, through, though it hurts. The most likely cause is Option A Acute arterial embolism. Option B Deep vein thrombosis. Option C Herniated lumbar disc. Option D is ruptured Achilles tendon. Option E is ruptured plantaris tendon. The correct answer in this scenario is option D, ruptured Achilles tendon because there is local ichymosis which is favoring the insertion of uh, Achilles tendon and the rest of options are false because in acute arterial embolism there are other symptoms which you will be acknowledging like decreased pulse, pallor. In deep venous thrombosis, there is usually tenderness in the whole leg, not it around the ankle. And in herniated lumbar disc, there is pain which radiates from back, leg, and towards the back of the thigh. Question number seven is an isolated complete rupture of anterior cruciate ligament which results in instability of tibia over femoral condyle. The direction of instability will most likely be option A anterior, option B anterior lateral, option C anterior medial, option D is posterior lateral, option E is posterior medial. So basically this question is about asking about the function of anterior cruciate ligament and the correct answer is in this scenario is the direction of anterior. Anterior cruciate ligament usually prevent the ext anterior extension of the femur on the tibial condyle, femoral condyle. In the picture you will see the functions of the anterior cruciate ligament. Question number 8 is the following will not form the boundary of inguinal canal. Option A. Lacunal ligament. Option B, external oblique epineurysis. Option C, transversalis fascia. Option D, conjoint tendon. Option E, inguinal ligament. So this question is about the boundaries of inguinal ligament, inguinal canal. And this is very important question because in every paper they will ask from this topic. So you have to remember this. The correct answer in this scenario is option A, lacunal ligament. It doesn't form the boundary of inguinal canal. Uh, the boundary of inguinal canal are formed as a mnemonic malt, superior, anterior, inferior and posterior. You can see the boundaries of the inguinal canal in the picture depicted here. Question number 9. After a gunshot injury to spinal cord, a patient complains of loss of thermal and pain sensation in the right lower limb on examination. and and in investigations, the lesion was found at the level of L1 on the left side. What tract of the spinal cord is most likely to be injured? Option A, left anterior spinothalamic tract. Option B, left fasciculus gracilis. Option C, left lateral spinothalamic tract. Option D, right anterior spinothalamic tract. Option E, right lateral spinothalamic tract. So this scenario is about asking about the tracts function. The correct answer in this scenario is option C, left lateral spinothalamic tract. Since the injury is on the left side, so the correct option will be left and the tract which carries thermal and pen sensation is lateral spinothalamic tract. The rest of the options are false because right side, there is left side injury so the right options are false and left anterior spinothalamic tract doesn't track, uh, carry the thermal and pain sensation and fasciculus crestless carry the same side vibration and two point discrimination sensations you can see the normal function of the uh, number of the order of the neurons in the picture showing here question number 10 pen and right calf on walking is most likely due to occlusion of Option A, posterior tibial artery. Option B, anterior tibial artery. Option C, femoral artery. Option D, obturator artery. Option E, iliac artery. The correct answer in this scenario is option B, anterior tibial artery, because it supplies the 
anterior calf compartment of the leg but since its origin is from the calf muscle from the back at the level of popliteus so the compression of the calf muscles causes occlusion of anterior tibial artery causing pain in the calf muscles while walking question number 11 in femoral triangle the following is present option a obturator nerve option b femoral nerve option c sciatic nerve option d genito femoral nerve option e rectus femoris muscle so the correct answer in this scenario is option b that is femoral nerve rest of the options are false because they are not present in the femoral triangle the contents of femoral triangle are femoral artery femoral vein and femoral nerve question number 12 which of the following bone does not have any muscle attachment option a cuboid option b talus option c cuneiform option d navicular option e calcaneum so the correct answer in this scenario is option b talus because it doesn't has any muscular attachment as shown in the figure Question number 13 a patient presents with an unstable knee joint following an injury during a football match on examination there was swelling of the joint and tibia could be moved excessively forward on the femur the structure most likely to be damaged is option a anterior cruciate ligament option b ligamentum patellae option c medial collateral ligament option d oblique popliteal ligament option c posterior cruciate ligament so the correct answer in this scenario is option a anterior cruciate ligament because it it protects the femur from over extending on the tibia excessive anterior movement is protected by anterior cruciate ligament question number 14 an unconscious boy of 11 years of age is brought to the emergency department of a hospital because of shock doctor on duty is unable to find any vein which vein of the lower limb is most likely to be chosen for any section option a dorsal venous arch option b femoral vein option c dead saphenous vein option d popliteal vein option e small saphenous vein so the correct answer in this scenario is option c great saphenous vein because in this scenario of shock we choose great saphenous vein for the venous access Question number 15 great saphenous vein option A receives single tributary at saphenous opening option B ends 3.5 cm lateral and below the pubic tubercle option C starts at saphenous femoral junction option D runs along lateral margin of leg option E ends 3.5 cm medial and below pubic tubercle So the correct answer in this scenario is option B that is it ends at 3.5 cm lateral and below the pubic tubercle the rest of the options are false because it receives multiple tributaries at saphenous opening and it ends at the saphenous femoral junction not at starts and it runs along the medial margin of the leg question number 16 loss of inversion of foot but able to avert muscles damage are option a extensor hallucis longus plus flexor hallucis option b tibialis anterior and flexor hallucis longus option c tibialis anterior and tibialis posterior option d flexor hallucis longus option e extensor hallucis longus
So the correct answer in this scenario is option C. The tibialis anterior and tibialis posterior are the primary in inverters of the foot. Rest of the options are false. Option E is slightly correct because it is secondary inverter of the foot but not the primary inverter so when a scenario comes like this when the both muscles group are in the options you have to choose the best one because in cpsp exam this asks for the best answers so you have to choose the option c that tibialis anterior and tibialis posterior regarding arches of the foot option a present at the time of birth option b mainly formed by foot Option C provide resilience. Option D helps to walk on uneven surface. Option E help in wet bed. So the main function of the arches of the foot is to help on the uneven surface. The correct answer is option D. Question number 18. A patient presented with fracture of femur and tibia, low blood pressure and rapid pulse. Which is the first step to do? Option A. To back slap. Option B. Maintain IV line. Option C. Maintain external fixation of a fracture. Option D. Internal fixation of a fracture. Option E. X-ray of a femur. So the correct answer in this scenario is option B that we have to maintain the IV line because patient is in the shock and we have to maintain the IV line. The so rest of the options are the secondary things to do. Question number 19. When L5 fuses with a sacrum it is called as option A scoliosis, option B kyphosis, option C lumbarization, option D sacralization, option E ankylosis. The correct answer in this scenario is option D, that is sacralization of the lumbar vertebra. Question number 20. Compression of S1 nerve root results in option A, a loss of ankle jerk, option B, positive Babinski sign, option C, sensory loss on sole and medial aspect of foot, option D, trophic ulcers on the dorsum of foot, option E, weakness of plantar extension. So the correct answer in this scenario is option A that is loss of ankle jerk is the sign when there is compression of S1 nerve root. Question number 21 root level of knee jerk is option A S1 S2 S3. Option B is L34, Option C is S1, S2, Option D is L25, Option E is L1 and L2. The correct answer in this scenario is Option B that is L3 and 4. Rest of the options are false because ankle jerk is with S1, knee jerk is the only reflex which is with the femoral nerve and that is supplied by L3 and L4. Question number 22. The hip joint is directly related to option A anteriorly to the sciatic nerve, option B inferiorly to the gluteus medius, option C inferiorly to the obturator externus muscle, option D posteriorly to the sauce bursa, option E posteriorly to the femoral nerve. The correct answer in this scenario is option C. Inferiorly, it is related to the directly related to the obturator external muscle. The rest of the relations you can see in the slides shown. Question number 23. An old man trying to cross the road stumbled and fell and was hit by a passing car. He was transferred to a hospital where X-ray showed fracture of the neck of left fibula. On examination, the patient's lower limb, he was unable to perform dorsiflexion reflection and eversion of the left foot. The most probable diagnosis could be injury of the left, option A, 
common perineal nerve option b deep perineal nerve option c perineus longus option d superficial perineal nerve option e tibialis anterior The correct answer in this scenario is option A, common perineal nerve, because it is most common nerve injured, injured when there is a fracture of head of fibula, causing inability to dorsiflex the foot. Question number 24. Most likely paralyzed muscle taking origin from femur, which causes instability of knee joint is option A, rectus femoris, option B, sartorius. Option C, vastus lateralis. Option D, semi membranous. Option E, semi tendinous. So, the correct answer in this scenario is option A, vastus lateralis. Its origin is from the intertrochantic line plus linear spur of femur and its insertion is tibial tuberosity and its function is to extend the tibia. Question number 25. Loss of eversion of foot occurs due to damage to which of the following muscle? Option A. Tibialis anterior. Option B. Tibialis posterior. Option C. Soleus. Option D. Pronius longus. Option E. Gastrocnemus. So the correct answer in this scenario is option D that is pronius longus because, because it is extensor of the foot. Option A and B are the inverters and option C is plantar flexor of the foot. Question number 26. A 19 year old man sustained a penetrating injury on the back of knee. Clinical examination reveals the lesion of lateral popliteal nerve due to the following findings option a foot drop option b spare the extensor of big toe option c causes paralysis of the inverters of foot option d causes sensory loss of medial surface of leg option e undisplaced fracture of lateral condyle of tb yeah so basically this question is about the common perineal nerve. In this scenario they, they are playing with a trick like using the word lateral popliteal nerve which is also known as common perineal nerve. So the correct answer in this scenario is option A, foot drop because injury to common perineal nerve or lateral popliteal nerve causes foot drop. Question number 27, an 18 year old girl is having a progressive painless swelling at the knee joint. On examination, it is found to be present at the upper end of TBA. Biopsy shows the presence of spindle shaped cells with many multinuclear giant cells and areas of hemorrhage and few mitosis. This picture is suggestive of Option A. Tuberculosis Option B. Giant cell tumor Option C. Osteosarcoma Option D. Chondrosarcoma Option E. Is chronic non-specific osteomyelitis. So the correct answer in this scenario is option B, that is joint cell tumor of the osteoclastoma. Spindle shaped cells are usually found in the joint cell tumors of the tibia. Question number 28, a 20 year old build, well built athletic male has come to the emergency with fracture of femur. The following will be true regarding it. Option A unites within two weeks, option B heals by membranic ossification. Option C can cause pulmonary embolism. Option D causes hypercalcemia. Option E can occur with a minor injury. So the correct answer in this scenario is can cause pulmonary embolism. Rest of the options are false because bone usually heals in 8 to 12 weeks and they cause hypercalcemia and femur fracture is not usually with the minor injury. Number 29, big toe infection is carried to the following lymph node. Option A, vertical group of superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Option B, medial group of superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Option C, lateral group of superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Option D, deep inguinal lymph nodes. Option E, external ileic lymph nodes.
So the correct answer in this scenario is option A. The bit from the toe, the lymph node supply, uh, lymph nodes drainage is to the vertical group of superficial and inguinal lymph node, as shown in the picture. Question number 30. A 60 year old man with a thrombus of femoral artery requires the placement of a stent. During the operation, the likely finding regarding femoral artery is Option A. A continuation of common iliac artery. Option B. Lies outside the femoral sheath. Option C. Has femoral nerve lying lateral to it. Option D. Passes at midpoint on an inguinal ligament. Option E. Pierces the adductor longus. So basically this question is about the relationship of the femoral artery. The correct answer in this scenario is option C that femoral nerve lies lateral to it. The rest of the options are false because it is continuation of external iliac artery and it lies inside the femoral sheath and it passes at midpoint between anterior superior spine and the symphysis pubis not on the inguinal ligament and it doesn't pierces the adductor longus rather it pierces the adductor magnus known as adductor hiatus question number 31 a 28 year old adult has a boil on his scrotum which group of lymph nodes should his doctor expect to be enlarged Option A, medial group of superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Option B, lateral group of superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Option C, vertical group of superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Option D, deep inguinal lymph nodes. Option E, external iliac lymph nodes. So the correct answer in this scenario is ideal group of superficial inguinal lymph node because it receives the uh, lymph drainage of medial side of the leg and also the scrotum. Rest of the versions are false. Question number 32. To lift the left foot off the ground while walking, the muscle playing an important role is Option A. Quadriceps Option B. The left gluteus maximus muscle Option C. The left gluteus medius muscle Option D. The right adductor longus muscle Option E. The right gluteus medius muscle The correct answer in this scenario is option E that is right gluteus, gluteus medius muscle helps in the lifting the left foot off the ground because it causes stability of the pelvis. So the trick in this question is that it is asking for the left foot and asking the function of the right side gluteus medius. So you have to be careful while answering these types of questions that you have to remember the function of the gluteus medius muscle and you should not be confused when they are playing with the options like putting the left and right gluteus medius muscle. Every time you have to remember that gluteus medius muscle is helping the opposite side of the pelvis.